A prodigal son unexpectedly shows up at a bar during a cold and stormy winter. He offers to tell him a story to pay off an old debt with the bartender. However, the night's events quickly spiraled into a disturbing tale of double crosses and shocking violence. Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we'll recap and review a thriller mystery movie called The Oak Room. Let's check it out. The movie begins with a snowstorm. Paul, a bar owner, closes his shop around 10 p.m. and starts cleaning up. While wiping the bar table, he noticed someone with a bag enter the bar, although it was closed. He walks towards the stranger, looking like a robber while holding his bat. Before getting hit by the bat, the stranger immediately removes his mask and reveals himself to be Steve. Steve is the son of Gordon, while Paul is the latter's best friend. He is shocked and furious to see the young college student. He seriously stares at him and thinks about why he suddenly appears out of the blue. Apparently, he did not attend his father's funeral, so Paul is furious at the arrogant kid. Apart from that, the arrogant young man acts dumb as if he does not owe Paul anything. Sick of the young man's attitude, he calls someone over the phone. Having an idea of who it is, the ungrateful kid gets scared, but he brushes it off, thinking it was only a bluff by the old man. Despite the snowstorm, the stranger is willing to travel and he will arrive in approximately one hour. Paul goes to the back of his bar to get what the arrogant kid originally came for, the ashes of the young man's late father. However, he is unwilling to give it up until the boy returns the money he owes. Then he tells about his hardships when his best friend died while Steve was nowhere to be found. He took care of everything just to give his friend a proper funeral and cremation. Instead of paying the money that he owes, the young man offers something different, a story. He pulls out a sticker for a bar called the Oak Room, insisting he tells him the story. And since he needs to wait for the person he called to arrive, he has no choice but to sit and listen to the kids' stories. The young man begins to recount a story that happened a week ago. A guy was preparing to close the bar when a stranger in a suit barged inside and went straight up to the bathroom. The stranger's hand is wounded and his phone's battery is already empty. He insists on staying for a while longer due to the snowstorm. Feeling really cold, he orders a brandy to keep himself somehow warm. He promises that he'll leave after he's warmed up. The wounded man asks if he could use the telephone, but the bartender says that the lines are cut off temporarily due to the bad weather. The agitated bartender keeps pestering the stranger so that he will leave, but the unwanted customer argues that he will not go back outside because it is freezing to the point that he can't feel his feet. The bartender suggests that he remove his shoes and he offers him a towel. Knowing that he can't go anytime soon, the bartender opens a beer and starts chatting with the stranger instead of just arguing with him. He recalls the coldest snowstorm he ever experienced as a child. His father burst into his room one night while he was sound asleep in his bed and woke him up. The father is in panic and the young bartender has never seen his father like that. Rushing to help his father in the barn, he gets out of the house with only pajamas and snow boots. As a poor family, they cannot afford to lose one of their livestock. A sick, pregnant pig is in labor. His father hands him a flashlight and instructs him to hold it steady while attending to the pig. The problem is, the young boy forgets to close the barn door, causing the cold wind to enter the barn. This leaves him shaking because he's only wearing his pajamas. What got him through the night was focusing on the sound of his father's watch. Now trust me, this isn't bad writing. It's just that the bartender doesn't know how to tell a good story or really pay attention to his patrons. But this will all make sense later on. The stranger was not impressed with the story, making the bartender slightly frustrated with the ungrateful man. As the customer was about to leave, the telephone suddenly rang. Apparently, the bartender lied to the man about it being broken. Back to the present, Steve ends the story there, which doesn't make any sense. He explains that it doesn't make any sense because he hasn't told the story's beginning. There's got to be a catch here. Why would someone start in the middle of a story when it isn't going to make any sense? Being unsatisfied with how Steve tells a story, Paul shares a made-up story that is so believable that the young man thinks it's true. He is just trying to make his point to the kid. Suddenly, the power was cut off, so the old man ordered the young kid to start the generator. While in the basement, he sees his father's old uniform making him emotional. He turns the generator on and gets back up, hoping to continue the story with Paul. However, his arrogant attitude pisses off the old man, who orders him to sit quietly. It's now his turn to tell a story. In another flashback, Paul's story also happened in a bar, and he was talking to his best friend, Gordon. They talk about their personal experiences when it comes to hitchhiking. Gordon shares that he used to do it a lot when he was still young because it was cheaper and safer. However, there is a particular story he can't seem to forget. At that time, he was trying to hitch a ride hoping to return home for Christmas. At first, no one stops to give him a ride. 
everyone's car he encounters just passes him. He was getting cold in the street but someone finally stopped for him. However, once the truck started running, he felt a very bad vibe about the driver. Gordon says that the driver didn't bother to look at him even once throughout the whole ride. Apart from that, he says the man didn't even say anything while driving. The situation is getting awkward so he tries his best to talk about different things hoping the driver will say something back, but he never does. He ran out of things to say afterwards so they traveled in silence for quite a while. Out of nowhere, the driver asks him a weird question about where he thinks he is going after death. The young Gordon safely answers heaven, but the driver only laughs and starts talking about dark things. Frightened by the driver, he stayed quiet in the passenger seat until they reached their destination. Before he hops out of the vehicle, the man stares at him and says he's going to hell, just like everyone else, and the young kid must visit him. After telling the story, Steve's old man shares that he's been feeling strange lately. He deeply regrets that he has been stuck in the same place for 20 years without progress. He is dismayed by everything that's happened and worries that his son might be involved in something dangerous. For him, it feels like his life turned out to be like hell, which is probably why he remembers the story from time to time. The father's backstory is both creepy and heartbreaking at the same time. Who would have jumped out of the car if you were in Gordon's position? On the other hand, witnessing an old person cry and regret what happened, it also makes you think. Going back to the present, Paul blames the young man for everything. He points out that his best friend sacrificed a lot of things to send his son to school, but he only wasted it. Steve goes inside the bathroom to vent his emotions and calm himself after realizing everything he has heard is true. Steve proceeds to continue to the first part of his story and things start to make sense. The flashback continues in the same bar, the Oak Room. A different bartender was about to close a shop when a customer entered. Apparently, this customer is the bartender in the second part of the story. He's been pretending to be a bartender all along, which makes sense now since he is not good at serving customers. The real owner of the bar serves the imposter a beer and starts to have a chat with him. The imposter once again shared the same story about him and his father, but this time around it's more of a continuation. The pregnant pig gives birth to six piglets, but one is stillborn, so the boy gets rid of it so the mother pig won't be upset. However, it started to breathe when he put the unresponsive piglet on the ground. Back to the present, the actual bar owner asks the imposter what he did after realizing that the piglet is alive. Out of nowhere, the imposter attacks the bar owner and says he is a traitor. He continues to hit the old man until he collapses on the ground. After that, the imposter removes the head of the bartender and places it inside the bag. Then, he changes his clothes and rinses his hands, ending the first part of the story. Apparently, in the last part of the second part of the story, the imposter also eliminates the unexpected customer by hitting multiple times with the telephone. After hearing the full story, Paul becomes doubtful about whether the story is true or not. He questions how Steve knows the full detail of the story even though there are no survivors. As Steve points out, one of the most bizarre aspects of the story is that a drunk person in a dark corner of the bar unintentionally witnessed the entire incident. Paul starts to get anxious and curious about why the suspects removed the bartender's head. Steve starts hinting that the hitman probably got the wrong guy. He then mentions that the killer said something before decapitating the bartender which made Paul shiver and panic. He decides to give him the remains of Gordon to Steve. The movie ends with a silhouette of a person walking toward the main door of the bar. So this movie didn't make any sense at all, especially in the beginning. However, once you stick with it for a little while, everything begins to start making sense. And you'll be glad you stuck around because the twists and turns, they all come together by the end. And yet, the ending will still leave you pondering. So if you're a fan of thriller movies, you're gonna like this one, as long as you can stay up until the end. Please subscribe to our channel to be notified when we upload. And don't forget to suggest movies that you want us to recap in the future in the comments down below.